today. Hi, my hair's all sticking out on my side. Got a little bed head going on. <laughs> Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Situation Room. And this is a, a live virtual quilt retreat that we do Monday through Fridays. Mondays through Fridays. It's early, y'all. And um, we just uh, work on UFOs or current projects, getting ready for Christmas. And uh, leave a comment in the chat and let me know if you're still scrambling to get things finished for Christmas. I know today I am going to be working on key fobs for all of the employees at my local UPS store. They treat me so well. I just love those guys. And I wanted to make them key fobs. And I did a video, oh gosh, must be two years ago or a little, maybe a little bit more now. Uh, Linda Fox came all the way from Virginia and she stopped in to visit me. She's an incredible embroiderer. And she showed me how to, how she makes the key fobs on her multi-needle. And so that is the plan today. I got the manager of the store to send me a list of all of his employees. So I've got their names and spelled right and all that. Let me get my coffee. So you need a mug rug for January soon. I'm glad you said that. You couldn't have, you couldn't have done that better. I got to show you. So there is a, a CD that's out there. It's, it's on fabricconfetti.com and I've got a link to it below. And they have, it's a Bruce Allen design. It, it's called, Oh, What Fun. And it's got different mug rugs for all different, you know, months of the year and holidays and whatnot. And yesterday I got a hair and I decided, well, I'm just going to make a new mug rug because <laughs> the one I have, it's over on the other side of the room, is, um, you know, it's for Christmas. So I decided to pull out some of the embellishments and whatnot that I've got in my embroidery stash and kind of make a new thing. So there is a mug rug with a snowman and a snow globe. And look at this. Now this, I actually went into Embrilliance embroidery software. You can do this with essentials. And I rearranged the stitching so that the outside went way later in the design. And it gave me an opportunity I added some stops, of course. This is that glitter fabric from Sweet Pea, okay? And then the vinyl is a piece of extra vinyl I had left over from a Kimberbell project. <laughs> and I just uh, popped all that on and it's let it snow. Look at that. And then I did a, uh, a copy and paste to duplicate the stitch that goes all the way around. I put that in the front of the design for a placement line for the batting and the fabric. And then that did that. And then the last all the way around was a envelope back for the backing. But yeah, it, it turned out great. So I've got myself a little snowman snow globe. This is from Oh What Fun from Fabric Confetti and super cute, very easy to put together and it's stitched out beautifully. I love it. <laughs> yeah, I've got nothing else to do, right? <laughs> oh my goodness. Hey, we've got a virtual kitchen like they have at every quilt retreat. And if you would like, please wander over. There are sweets and things for breakfast and coffee and juice and all of that. And none of them have any calories or fat. So, uh, yeah. I love the envelope back too from mug rugs. That is just so easy. My, it is not fun. You know, when they leave a little uh, flap opening on the front and then you've got to fold it in just right and make sure it doesn't get a, that little camel back looking thing. <laughs> yeah. It turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it as you know, as far as that goes. So um, that's what you're doing. Who else needs a 20 hour day to get everything done? Tammy says, yeah, me too. Absolutely. All right. Today I have got to, besides those, uh, those key fobs, I got to dig all that out. You know, the hardware I need to, uh, Oh, Margie's got breakfast burritos. Hurry up y'all. They're going to go fast. 
So I, uh, I'm going to have to have my husband squeeze the pliers together for the key fobs. I made a couple last year for my son and daughter-in-law and the kids and all that. And they're, um, my, especially my daughter-in-laws, it, it came apart. I don't have the hand strength. So they need uh, some sort of press for us old people with weak hands. I've got a press for, I use a press for the um, cam snaps. That would be nice if they had a little attachment, right? That you could put on. I might. I might try to do something where I take two little pieces of wood or something like that and press. I don't know. Yeah. So that's going to be fun. I'm just checking here on the comments with you guys. I'm over here on this side of the room. We had talked about doing some stuff with the luminaire yesterday and it's been 24 hours and I don't remember what it was, but I know I needed to be over here. Maybe you guys will remind me. You know, I got an email yesterday with some photos from a lady who bought that ditch foot for her luminaire. Y'all, she could not get it to fit. She sent me pictures and everything. I get mine to fit on the luminaire. We had talked about that ditch foot from Ken's Sewing. And uh, they do have pieces for the cam snap press. Really? Awesome, Colleen. You guys are just full of information. Thank you very much. I'm going to check that. Of course, it's too late today, but I'll put Mr. Man to work today. Okay. Charlene has it too. End to end. That's what I was. Yeah. Okay. So does somebody have crow for me in the kitchen? <laughs> That's what it was. Y'all, I was looking in design center. I did not look in embroidery on the luminaire. I've got the luminaire right here. Let me turn her on. Hello, Darla. This is Darla and my 10 needle is Spanky because I'm old and those names mean something to me. <laughs> I've um, I got the embroidery foot on there now. I got a show y'all yesterday at 10 o'clock. I did the, um, we were doing the Kimber Bell mini quilts and I was working on this guy before the camera came on and I had to stop, but I want to show you, this is just a little tip. Uh, if you have to stop in the middle of a project for something and you've got to pull the hoop and go to another foot and go do something else, you know, because life gets in the way, right? Uh, write on your stabilizer. I wrote what step I was on, number 16, and I wrote my stitch number. That's just very handy. So you don't have to stare at it and go, what was I doing? <laughs> so, yeah, good morning, everybody. You name your machines 2K, good, yeah. You can't get the cam snaps to snap together after you put them on. Oh, yeah. Those things, it's like if you press them too hard, they mash like a pancake in the middle and then they don't, then they don't snap. So you got it. Maybe you just don't know your own strength. That's possible. Do I realize you said you could sew the blocks together on Christmas Day? I did realize that. Not at the time. You guys let me know that. So I am going to um, come alive. The needle's down. All right. Oh, I was playing around yesterday with that foot to take pictures of mine to show the lady that it does work on my machine. Anyway. Uh, all right. Here you go. Hello. Oh. She's going slow this morning, moving slow, like, like me. <laughs> uh, Luminaires, Carly, that's beautiful. You use as E6000 on the inside of the metal fob before pressing together. Oh, that's smart. Oh, Carla, that's so smart. I love that. She uses a tiny bit of glue. That E6000 is serious stuff. Here's my husband. Hoping he can sneak by. Good morning. I didn't sneak it by. Good morning, I said, Beach. That's what he's talking about. <laughs> Did y'all know you can hover in the upper right corner and save the video to a collection? Oh, that's handy. See, I'm on StreamYard. I see you guys on StreamYard. Y'all are watching on YouTube, so I don't see what you see on YouTube all the time. 
Yeah, that's a fabulous idea. Yeah, I love that. So I love how much you guys share here. That's very nice. So I need to get this done before I get into anything else. And we'll get into that edge to edge. But I'll let me bring you guys up here and show you. So yes. And I'll show you what I was talking about. And then I'll show you what everybody else was talking about. Let me roll you guys up here to take a look at the screen. Okay. Let me zoom you in. You can see what I'm talking about. Okay. So what you guys were talking about, if you go to embroidery and then right here on Q for quilting, it has got all of these frames on 01. There's more frames on 02 and more frames on 03. And 04 is the end to end. And you get 10 designs in there on end to end. That's it. So we've got some, they look like hibiscus flowers, some leaves, sewing machines, some snowflakes, stars, and all that. So that you've got to tell it set. And I guess you need to go in and tell your computer, your, the computer, yeah, tell your machine exactly uh, how large your quilt is. And it will figure out for you how many across and how many down. So you can just put in your keypad and hit set and off you go. So there we go. And then what I was talking about was in Design Center. They have background quilting designs in Design Center. So you choose a shape and I'll just pick a square and tell it OK. And then this from the red square here, these five boxes. So the red with the little diagonal lines, the paintbrush, the bucket, the eyedropper, and the properties, that is for the fill. Up here, the line with the zigzag, the pencil, the paint bucket, the eyedropper, and the properties, okay? That is for draw line drawing. So I'm just going to choose this, and then you get, choose what you want. Do you want straight lines with the design in it? Do you want a stipple? Or do you want a multi, you know, some other kind of multi-design? You choose that. And then here's where this comes up and you choose select. Now, what I was talking about is the ends of these lines right here. All right. Especially like on this, if you want to do a chicken quilt and you want to do that chicken wire design, you can't match those up from box to box. It's just impossible. Choose that. Tell it okay. Tell it okay. Dump it in the box. So you hit your paint bucket and then dump it in the box. So see all these little ends? Whoops. Undo. See all the little ends? These little, like they end on the edge of the square. You cannot match those up from box to box. Now it's fine. Also, when you're doing this, it's there's stuff in a certain order. So if you look at this now, you can't make it bigger. You've got to choose the size right after you choose the... Um, well, thank you, Candace. You're so sweet for my super sticker. Aren't you a love? Thank you. Okay. So this just, once you set the design in, you can't change the size. You can't rotate it. You can't do anything like that. If you want to change the size, you got to start over. All right. So then you hit next. And then uh, I usually work from the bottom up to tell it. So you actually have two stitches here. You've got your background quilting and then you've got that big black line that I don't like. Anyway, <clears throat> this isn't a lesson about that, but you go back home. So that's what I was talking about with not being able to meet up. Now, that those are great. If you're making pot holders, those are great because you make them just a tiny bit bigger than your actual pot holder that you want it to be. Let it stitch itself out and then you can just cut it because you can stitch that out on a fabric sandwich, right? A quilt sandwich with your whatever you want in the morning, uh, in the morning. I just read good morning, whatever you want in the middle. <laughs> so that uh, that will allow you to do beautiful background quilting on whatever it is, but it's only good for one block. So that's the th that's what I was talking to the engineer about was the ability to do, you know, to match those up. And I could see her brain working going, mm, yeah. So I don't know. I 
also, I think that the end to end that they've got going on is great uh, in the embroidery section, but I've done end to end like with designs by Juju stuff. So that leads me to believe all it does is the math for you. And that's fine to figure out how many across and how many down. And if you don't want to figure that out yourself, but you're using a Juju design, come over to your, come over to your luminaire and put it in and it'll tell you, right? Okay. You guys are talking about saving in YouTube. All right. But um, my issue is I'll load the quilt wonky. Yeah. So if you load the quilt wonky in the frame, in the hoop, magnetic or no, it doesn't matter how great you get the points meeting if the quilt makes the design go like this or this, right? So that's where I would have problems. So because you cannot print these out of the machine, there's no way to print them. I would have to stitch it out on cutaway stabilizer, that kind that looks like paper. It adjusts for that. Well, that thing's pretty smart then. Yeah. I'll have to play with it. I'll, I'll admit, I, you got, obviously, I haven't played with it. It adjusts for that. Mm, I don't know. I can screw it up pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So this morning, I need to finish up my little snowman. I've got to put in the water-soluble bobbin. I'm just going to go ahead and do that, you guys, while we're here so I can get this done. Use your camera and it has a lineup for you in the luminaire. Okay. I'll trust you guys. I'll give it a shot one day, okay? Let me go into um, embroidery. Where is my USB? Oh, I don't have it here. I didn't put it in the machine either. Hmm. It's across the room, y'all. I got another camera here. I was going to play with uh, the scan and cut this morning and put the trunk on the Christmas tree. So maybe I'll do that. Designs by Juju has some cute snow globes. Good. Yeah, I know. Y'all. Use my projector to line it up. I know. I can still screw that up. Don't, don't doubt me. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I did put heat and bond light on the back of my tree trunk. Told you I had wood fabric. Yeah. <laughs> We're all here to make each other feel good. Yeah. Good morning. Y'all are coming in from all over the country all over the world. That's fantastic. So I guess I'll just work on my, uh, my tree trunk then this morning, since I didn't bring the USB over here with my snowman design. I also have the fabric I need to do the top of the star with my three piece flying geese. Boy, that was a fiasco. And um, I can sew on that in a little bit. Victorville, California, Mary. There's an Air Force base out there, right? I'm pretty sure there is. Now, I didn't, I don't have the, uh, I don't have the HDMI cable for this camera with me was unable to locate yesterday. Never too old to learn anything. That's right. George is out there. Thank you, Mary. That's right. So I'll just pull this over and turn the camera and you guys can watch me do this if you want. We'll get this going. Let me turn this on. At least I've got it plugged in. I got my stuff together that way, right? And my pattern for this Today's my, uh, my half brother's birthday. So I sent him a little blue mountain greeting card. Those are so fun. It's got balloons singing the celebrate. So fun. <laughs> All righty. So here is my tree trunk template. All right. I'm going to show you guys. 
Have, has, is there anybody who's never seen this? I know you guys have followed me for a long time. So I'm going to use my scanning map. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scan the tree trunk into the luminaire and then the luminaire. I'm going to scan the tree trunk into the scan and cut and then I'm going to cut it out on my fabric. Make sure I have enough fabric. Ooh, just barely. I'm good. And then, uh, okay. How much is the discount on my discount code from Brilliance? Jody wants to know. It's 10%. Some people were having trouble with it. And the email they sent out had the in time in all caps. So, but when you apply it, it comes up in all lowercase. So if you have trouble putting it in in all caps, try it in all lowercase. I've got the link right below the video in the description box. Okay. So I'm just going to scan this in because I don't want to cut my own fabric, right? Let me turn this so you guys can see what I'm doing. And I'm just going to touch it so it carriage will move. Okay. It's going to get itself worked out here. I'm going to put this in here. Scanning mats are handy because the scan and cut will pick up every little cut and jiggle and whatever in one of your cutting mats. So that's why I like the scanning mat. These are very handy. Get that off there. Get rid of the fur and the Frito fur and the thread and all of that. I'm going to hit scan and scan to cut data. And I need to load the mat. And it's early. <laughs> it takes three times to get the code in, Valerie says. Okay, good. Yeah, Valerie snagged herself summarily, I think. And I'm going to just hit start and let it scan in my tree trunk. Somebody had sent me an email yesterday and asked me to make a video to show going from the scan and cut to the luminaire using the My Connection feature for applique. And y'all, I generally don't do that because I it's so much easier to clean up your scan and everything on the canvas and just send everything wirelessly. So, all right, I want outside only because I don't want those little words or any of that business. So I'm just gonna choose outside only. And okay. Yeah, there's a lot of noise on the mat here. And I want to show you what I'm talking about. I'll show you what I'm talking. Let me get in here so you guys can see what I'm doing. <laughs> You're my people. <laughs> okay. See all the little noise? That's what they call it in the art world on digital images. All of the little lines and dots. Now, those are the edges of the paper. So I don't need the triangle. I just need the trunk. Okay. And ideally, what you're supposed to do if you're going to work on the machine is you just grab these little arrows and drag it in to eliminate as much as the, of the noise as possible without messing up your image. Okay. So I would just, now you got to hit preview. I still have things I want to get rid of. And you can go through the select, delete, select, delete. And I that's just too much like work, y'all. I don't want to do that. So I'm going to tell it, okay, it's outside only. I only want one piece of it. I'm going to save it in the cloud. I don't want to save it on the machine. It'll take me forever. It says save successful. Okay. And I'm going to um, eject the mat. And tell it okay. And go back to home. All right. It's just so much easier, y'all, to use the technology to us that we've got available. So you, you know, and a lady sent me an email or was it a comment? Maybe it was a comment on a video about using a dongle on the Luminaire to preserve the USB connection slot 
on the machine. You guys, if you want to do that, that's great. Knock yourself out. No problem. I use, uh, Ellen wants to know if I could use the low tack mat to scan as well. Yes, you can. You can put paper on the low tack mat. Don't do it on the purple or the gold mat. You'll be sorry. But there's all kinds of noise that will be picked up on that low tack mat. So just an FYI, still easy to clean up. But if you want to use a dongle, that's fine. I've used one on Spanky before, but you guys, most of the time I send my designs wirelessly. So I don't even have to fiddle with that. They've got the brother design database transfer that will send designs wirelessly to all of your uh, brother, I think, or baby lock machines. I'm going to pull up the, um, brother canvas right now and get logged into that. And then I'll show you guys what I'm going to do. This is just so much easier. Okay. All righty. So let me go to present and share screen. Yeah. There's so many different pieces. Um, Cindy uses dime to clean it up there. Okay. There's so many different things and options for you guys to do this. Um, it seems like every company wants in on the party. And so they come up with their own way to do it too. And that's fine. It's perfectly fine. Can you guys see what I see? I have to double check. Otherwise I'll be clicking along and y'all will be screaming. I can't see it. I'm going to go to my projects and there's my trees from peace on earth. I think this is it right here. The last one I just did. There it is. So I'm just going to click this edit button. And I'm going to grab the piece I want to keep and move it off the mat. And then I'm going to highlight the entire mat and hit delete on my keyboard. There we go. There is the trunk of my tree. I'm going to go ahead and just do it straight like that and put it. Oh, right about there. I'll be fine. It's easier for me to line up the fabric that way. And that's it. So I'm going to hit uh, download. I'm not going to save it or anything. I don't need to save it. And I'm going to send it to the scan and cut so I can cut out the fabric and hit close. And now I'm going to download it again. And I'm going to send it down to my downloads so I can stitch it out on the fabric. Perfect. I'm all done with Canvas. See how simple that was? Y'all, that is so easy to do. <laughs> yeah. Now, uh, I, I'm going to do the same thing with the tree skirt parts, but I haven't figured out the fabric that I want to use for the tree skirt parts yet. All right. Let me get my low tack mat, wherever that might be. Let me turn this here so you guys can watch what I'm doing. Okay. Let's get this out of the way. Boy, that doesn't feel like it has very much stick on it, does it? I need to probably clean this up a little bit. Isn't that how it always goes? Clean up right before versus clean up after. I've been using the fire out of this. It's just a cotton nail bottom wipe, personal wipe. You want to use something that doesn't have any alcohol or any lanolin kind of oil in it. So baby wipes are not recommended because a lot of baby wipes have got oil in them. Oh, I had mentioned to y'all too about finishing up the snowmies, the Kimberbell. Hey, look at all that funk that's on my mat. Finishing up the snowmies on Monday. We're going to have to back that up to Tuesday because Monday is Christmas. And I'll probably be here by myself if that's the case. So I'm, I'm going to wait. And we'll, we'll finish it up on Tuesday. Still have homework to finish the snowmies though. Okay. There we go. That's what I'm after. Good stick. 
Where's my trash can? Okay, so here's my fabric. And you want to iron on your heat and bond light so that it is nice and glassy. That's a good adhesion. Okay, night make it. If it's dull, it is not on there well. So, all right, I'm just going to put this right here. That thing, I hope it fits. Because <laughs> I think I just barely have enough fabric. That's a pretty wood grain. I love that fabric. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? Beautiful wood grain. Question for a dime software user. Does that software wireless transfer designs? Hmm. I don't know. I don't use dimes, Pep. Okay. I bet you it does. It would seem to me it would. You, if you want to have good software in today's market, you better have a wireless capability on it love this. All right. This isn't a scan and cut lesson, but I'll talk you guys through what I'm doing. Let's see. There we can see it a little bit better. All right. So I want to retrieve data because the patterns are patterns that were in the machine when you bought it. So I want to retrieve data. And where do I want to get it from? I want to get it from the cloud. You can get it from inside the machine, from the cloud, from a USB or a computer, from the cloud. And it will show you the last thing you sent down. There it is. That looks good. Okay. That looks fine to me. So now I'm going to touch the blue button with the bar across it. That's the mat scanning button. And I'm going to hit start. I want that to take a picture of the mat. So it's pulling in the mat now to take a picture of the fabric. Well, there we go. Ah, perfect. Look at that. That's awesome. So the nice thing about this is now you can move this around. If I had missed, you can move it around. That's fine. I like to have at least half an inch, top, bottom, side, side, at least half an inch. That looks good. All right. I'm just going to hit uh, OK and select and cut. I'm going to mash this on better just to make sure. Where's my cool little uh, brayer I got from Amy Sews, from Amy Bachman's Sew and Quilt? Where's my little, my new handy dandy little brayer? You can use a pampered chef pastry mat too if you want. A uh, paste, pastry roller. I think this is fine. That should work. And I'm just going to hit start. <laughs> All rolling. I didn't get down to the bottom. Okay. We'll see how that goes. <laughs> And I've just got the standard blade in. That's the black blade that came with it. Oh, that was difficult. My goodness. <laughs> Perfect. Love, love, love. You've been having trouble cutting fabric. Okay. Yep. Transfer your GG. Okay. DG downloaded digital design database. I'll have to look at that later. GG, GG send me an email, power tools with threaded outlook.com. And I will see what I can. I'll see if I can't troubleshoot for you and help. This turned out beautiful. You guys Look at that. nice, pretty point. And one of the things I love about having heat and bond on the back is that it seals the edges so you don't get a lot of fraying which is really nice so i'm gonna tell it okay and eject i'm done with you sweet scan and cut you can delete all patterns and tell it okay all right that worked out perfect again that was on my aqua low-tech mat okay 
Oh, I hear Harley outside. All righty. So now I need to turn that into an embroidery design. So is Dave here, my favorite flight attendant? Hi, Dave. I emailed you back. He made the cutest little stockings for his cats. <laughs> I think that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Where's Admire Kansas? My husband's from Manhattan. My mother-in-law is from uh, Clay Center. You thought you're supposed to cut with the heat and bond on top instead of the bottom. Frito, my word, girlfriend, come here. So you would do the heat and bond on the top if you're using the standard tack mat. Low tack mats don't come with the machine all the time. So if you don't have a low tack mat, you want to do it pretty side down, paper side up. All right. Because it's impossible. You, if you put heat and bond on your uh, super sticky mat, your standard or your gold mat, you're going to find yourself in trouble. So it totally depends on what mat you're using and how sticky it is. Now, if your low tack, I'm sorry, if your standard tack mat, the purple one is not super sticky anymore, then do it face up. You, you decide. Okay. Yeah. 60 miles from Manhattan. It's north of Emporia. Okay, great. Awesome. Probably been by there. <laughs> My father-in-law used to go to the casinos all the time. <laughs> Gmail power tools with, I don't have a Gmail. Oh, my email again. I'm sorry. I can't see. It's power tools with thread at outlook.com. So Frito just came in, burst through the doggy door, did a 180 and headed back out the doggy door. <laughs> What's the difference between the scan and cut models? Stacy wants to know. Uh, so as a rule, all scan and cuts scan and cut the same. They all use the same optical reader technology which is the eyeball that looks back and forth. So it doesn't matter whether you get the SDX 85 or the SDX 330D. What matters is the capabilities within each one of those machines. So if you want to do what I just did, you can do that on an SDX 85 where you don't have to buy a machine. That's the cost of a car payment. Okay. Or if you want to get the whole nine yards, a lot of people like the best, that's fine. If it has a D in it, it has Disney designs inside of it. And the difference between the two top two models of the 325 and the 330D is just the Disney. And that's it. So the 325, which is what I have, is top of the line sans Disney. Okay. Uh, okay. So everything else to that, it is a difference. Of, and they're all wireless. Okay, all of the SDX models are wireless. So, and I'm just talking about SDX. I'm not talking about the old CM models. Okay. After that, it's how many designs are internal to the machine, uh, how um, how good the eyeball is that goes back and forth. You get different dot, different dots per inch scanning technology, and then the higher end machines, two to five and up. It's all about can it scan a 24 inch mat or can it scan and cut a 24 inch mat, which is very handy when you're cutting out loads and loads of pieces of fabric. So anyway, that that's pretty much, you know, bare bones. Those are the differences in the machine. So if you buy replacement mats, make sure the numbers are correct. Mats are not interchangeable between all models. So that's what Sun Country Girl Designs is talking about. She's absolutely right. You just need to make sure when you buy, if you have an SDX machine, down here at the bottom, I'll take this off, the letters DX, down here at the bottom, there'll be a code, the letters DX, C-A-D-X, Matt, whatever. That's for a DX machine. You cannot use the mats from the old CM machines in the DX because the square dots that it reads on the bottom and the top are different. So they're not interchangeable. But all SDX mats work on all DX machines. So as long as it says DX, if you've got an SD, 
And you can tell if you have an SDX, if you forgot, because they're very, very nice to tell us right here. See it? Right there. SDX 325. Oh, you can't see that. SDX 325. Oh, it's right there below the screen. It tells you what kind of machine you have. Okay. There. Have I used this? Scan a cut for a Lori Holt applique quilt. Have I? Have I ever? You betcha. I did chicken salad with that. My friend Valerie, she's here. She just did be vintage with it. The whole nine yards. She used it to cut out all the pieces and then she used the FCM file to create the embroidery designs, which is what I'm about to do and show you guys. Which, okay. So let me pull this over here so I have my mouse. All right, I am going to uh, open up in Brilliance and show you guys how to do this. Now, what I'm about to show you, all home embroidery machines will do this. I'm sorry, I said that all wrong. Most embroidery software, high-end embroidery software will do what I'm about to show you, but it's very difficult. I like in Brilliance because it's easy to do this. So I have Stitch Artist 2. And if you wanna do this, you need to get in Brilliant Stitch Artist 2. I've got a coupon code for 10% off below in the description box. If you use my link, I appreciate it very much. But Stitch Artist 2 will convert the digital file from the scan and cut that I sent to Canvas and back down to the laptop on that second download into an embroidery design. That's what I'm about to do. Are you guys ready for some magic? Okay. Yeah, Heather's got the old CM350 and it's working good for now. Yeah, you're good. And you can, it, even with that old CM model, you can do what I'm about to show you with Brilliance. So I want to share screen and let me do that. And I want to go to window and grab the Brilliance and share it. Okay. So to jump into Stitch Artist 2, because right now we're looking at pretty much the uh, essentials menu. But when I click on this icon right here, I get a whole new ribbon right there with a bunch of new buttons and I want to click vector and it's in my downloads. And there it is right there. I can see it right here. I'm going to click open and I want to highlight it, make sure it knows that that's the one that's selected. And then there is an applique button right here. It looks like a backwards E stitch. I'm just going to click that. There we go. All done. So here in the properties box, you can see now I've got a uh, position line and a tack down. Okay. And if I scroll in, I'm going to roll in the mouse button. You can see it's an E stitch. If I wanted a blanket stitch, I can highlight it on applique. See that? And now I can change the stitch length or the width, or I can go blanket, satin, zigzag, or none. So I'm going to put the blanket stitch and that converts the whole thing to a simple blanket stitch. Scroll back out. That's fine. And that looks good. So I want to, um, I, right now it's still a drawing. It says .fcm, that's that vector file from the scan and cut. So I need to save it into an embroidery design. And I'm going to tell it file and save as, um, I'm just going to save the stitch file. I'm not going to edit it again. Save stitch file as, and I'm just going to leave it in my downloads. And it is going to save as a uh, PES design, which is default for me. And I'm just going to call it tree trunk and hit save and hit enter. All right. So now I want to open up my tree trunk. I'm going to go to open my little open icon. There's my tree trunk and it says PES. If you're not sure which one, if you ever do this, hover over the edge of this. Can y'all see that box? Um, I'm not sure that you can see the box because I can't tell. Anyway, I'm just going to click open there. And there's my tree trunk. Okay. So I'm just going to come up here to utility and send to Solaris XP1. It means 
any brother or baby lock machine that is connected to your home network that accepts designs wirelessly trunk. That's good enough for me. I'm going to tell it okay. It's going to look file sent to machine. I just got that notification. You may not be able to see that because it's in a new window. I hit stop sharing. Okay. Can you do this with a silhouette? Yes, you can do it with a silhouette. Absolutely. Because this is a great question. Karen's got, you can do it with a silhouette because in brilliance allows you to import vector files created from the silhouette, the studio files. You can import those in in brilliance. Yes, you can. Studio is one of the formats that it accepts. So that's very handy. Would I still use the black blade if I was cutting denim recycled jeans? Uh, Deb, you know, it depends on how much lycra is in that denim. If it's a straight cotton, sure. I think you'd be okay so long as you've got that back, you've got heat and bond light on the back and it's securely on your sticky mat. If you've got lycra, inside that denim, like stretchy jeans, the, the blade, because there's rubber in there. That's what Lycra is. It's a stretchy, it's kind of like a rubber. Imagine dragging that blade through rubber bands. You might get some drag marks and you might want to use the rotary blade for that. Yeah. Just kind of, just kind of think about that. Yes, you can do layered applique. Absolutely. Valerie did it. Yeah, so she's answering. You can do layered applique. This is just an easy one for you guys to see what I'm doing. So let's take a look at the machine. This is why I don't use the dongle, y'all. You know, you've got all this technology. Use it. It's right there for you. Let's get in here. I need another sip of coffee. Oh, I put my coffee mug over here because my stuff in my cup got cold. So I have a thermal one over here. All righty. I'm going to go here. And I'm going to go to the pocket for memory. And you've got the machine, USB, a chip. There's the cloud. That's the my connection. It's coming from the cloud. And I need my trunk. I named it trunk. So it's down in the, there it is right there, trunk. Ta-da. There it is right there. And look, it's got two designs. Okay, so let me go into, let me hit embroidery. And I'll go into needle plus minus. So the first one is the placement line. And the next one is the E-stitch. Now, the problem is, if you didn't pre-cut your pieces, what you would need to do is stitch the placement line twice. So you would want to go into needle plus minus and stitch your placement line twice. Okay. Yeah, so whoever it was that asked about the silhouette, y'all, I have a whole load of videos and playlists. And just look for, scan and cut, look for um, Simply Applique or BES or in Brilliance, any of my videos, because I used to have used different software over the years. You have a file saved in Brilliance, save as stitch and working. You see the PES and BE file, but it's now not allowing you to make changes in the BE file. Barbara, I've noticed that. That happens. I have noticed that, that once you save it, it's like game over and the ability to go back in and edit. I don't know. Try closing in Brilliance and then bringing up just the B BE file again. Then you need to jump into Stitch Artist, make sure you're in Stitch Artist and not on the main file, but where it says applique or yeah, where it says it, see if that works. Can BES4 remove stitches under layered applique? All right, Ellen. No. No. In short, BES or simply applique cannot remove stitches under layers. And that's one another reason why I moved away from BES software. What you have to do with BES or Simply Applique is save each piece as its own individual embroidery file, like a PES file for Brother, for instance. 
Boy, you guys are questions, questions, questions. Yeah. You have to save each piece of its own. So let's say you have a tree and you have a trunk. So you have to bring up the tree, turn the tree into embroidery, save it and close it. Bring up the trunk, bring, turn the trunk into embroidery, save it and close it. Start a brand new design, bring in the trunk, bring in the tree, <laughs> okay, on top of the trunk. And maybe it will work. Maybe. Oh my gosh, my dog. She's out there barking because it's almost time for breakfast. Sounds like a pound. She makes so much noise. My goodness. So BES has a remove under stitches along with nap control, depending on which power packs. Okay. So thank you, Cindy. But you've got, you can't do it like I do in, in Brilliance, where you bring in a bunch of different pieces where you tell it, create design, begin new design. You bring in all these different pieces and that's why you do that. You have to tell the software, this is a whole new design. That's a whole new design. BES does not allow you to do that. And also when you guys talk about removing stitches, a lot of you mentioned removing hidden stitches in the world of embroidery. That's the wrong term. Hidden stitches are stitches that are like underlays that are underneath a satin stitch. Maybe it's really, really dense on an underlay under a satin stitch. That is what hidden stitches are. I, I've come to learn this, okay? So what you're looking for is removing overlapped stitches. So if you ever send in a ticket to in Brilliance and you say, I wanted to remove hidden stitches, they don't know what you're talking about. They think you're needing something like the density repair kit module that removes hidden stitches. It is not designed to remove a blanket stitch underneath a piece of fabric that overlaps it. So is the dongle a memory card that holds the embroidery designs? Riverside wants to know. No, ma'am. The dongle is uh, an exit off the highway to the access road. That's all it is. It doesn't, you know, it's still a road. All it is, is a path, a physical pathway to get embroidery designs from a USB stick, a storage device onto your embroidery machine. That's what a dongle is in this instance. I've got a dongle right here. I can't disconnect that. I've got a dongle. Some embroidery software uses a dongle. I've got a dongle right here. That's a dongle. It looks like a little USB. This is for my wireless mouse. You might have a dongle for a mouse and a keyboard all in one. Yeah. It is a connecting cable. That's all it is. It's a, it's an exit off the highway onto the access road. <laughs> Just that little exit piece. That's all it is. Yeah. So you figured out your fonts. Oh, good, Judy. Yay. You got your fonts working. Yay. Success. Don't we love success? I love success. Um, the Patty says the Dumble's a security device. Uh, oh, in the case of embroidery software, yes, that is the point of the dongle to make sure that the software is not pirated. Yes, that is correct. Because if you don't have the dongle, you cannot use the, that software. Um, Artista is like that. Yes. Oh, your Solaris doesn't like the OESD dongle. It doesn't always read it. Ah, okay, Kim. That is common. So that's one of the reasons, you guys, um, most USBs will come in a no larger than a four gig. An older machine may only read up to a two gig. So this is probably not the case with what she was talking about. But um, it can be a receiver, Janie, in the case of my little dongle that I've, dongle is used for any kind of USB extra thing that plugs into the machine to, so I'll show you. I'm going to point this down so you guys can see what I'm talking about. We're going to have a little tech lesson. How's that? I'll just turn this down so you guys can see. All right. So this is a dongle. 
This was the dongle for my mouse. That's that's for this guy. Okay, it doesn't work now because I took the dongle out. So I'm gonna put it back in so I can use my mouse. This is a dongle. This is called a dongle as well. It connects by USB, all right? All this one does, this one is a receiver to make my mouse work and an external keyboard if I had one. I usually use the keyboard on the laptop. This dongle is so that I can connect in. I, it gives me multiple USB ports. So I've got three extra ports here and one port here versus just the single port. They're both called a dongle, okay? They're extra USB connections. Some are receivers. Some are just a pathway. Yeah. That's Caroline's right. The dongle has many applications using the same term word, dongle. Yeah, that's right. You're confused. This embroidery software is overloading your brain. <laughs> I I know. It's crazy, isn't it? Uh, it's overloaded. Yeah, just start playing with it. Just start following along with any of my videos where I do applique using embroidery and it'll go bing. Yeah. Baby lock palette software does. So I will tell you, um, okay. Palette 11, the original palette software looks and smells an awful lot like in brilliance an awful lot until that contract ended. And then in brilliance, Brian took the company out on his own to make in brilliance and the palette software was added to, um, award, the contract was awarded to a new company. Yep. For a long time, you thought the little dongle was the tooth for the Bluetooth. <laughs> Gene, that's a scream. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. Yep. Dongle is just fun to say, Michelle. Says. <laughs> that's hilarious. It is just fun to say, right? Dingle, dangle, dongle. I know. Okay. Still need the plan for cart for scan and cut. Okay. Make sure the OASD cable is in the USB port and not the mouse port. Um, I'm not sure there's a difference, but okay. Maybe. Who knows? So when your machine is reading... Oh, we're almost to eight o'clock. So when your machine is reading external memory, okay? And by external memory, I mean a USB, right? So when your machine is reading external memory, any computer is reading external memory, the first thing it does is it reads the room, okay? It, know, it wants to know its audience. So your machine goes out and reads the room and it says how many folders are here and how many files are here. And let me figure out exactly what is here so that when my user clicks whatever, I know exactly where it is to go grab it and serve it up to them. So I can give it to them right away. That's the way the brain will work in your sewing machine or your computer or whatever. If you get a really, really large chip, let's say like this takes a chip and you take a chip that's a 64 gig chip and you pop it in there, one of two things can happen, but I think they'll, it'll error out. But what'll, am I teaching at All Brands in February and March? They have asked me, Charlene, and I told them I would. So we're waiting for details to work all that out. Yeah. So what happens is, is if there's a great big, big memory on, on a USB or a chip or something, when the machine goes to look to see what's on it before, when it's blinking, it's doing a survey. What's in the room? What's here? Okay. If it's a great big chip, the machine looks to the back of the room and says, I can't see the back. I'm not dealing with it. And it won't work. Does that make sense? <laughs> Oh, okay. Good, Kay. Taking hubby to the eye surgeon today. All right, good. Well, prayers. I hope everything comes out okay. You're not sure then the OESD cable works fine. Patty, just put the design, send it wirelessly if you can. Grab a design on your laptop or whatever. You know, just use an intermediary. I don't know. 
again, is it the OESD cable? Did you buy the cable from OESD? That can fail. That can fail too. Yeah. That little is that the little dongle cable? Yeah. Last checkup. Okay, good. Wonderful. Maybe the problem is the USB stick used. Yeah, there you go. So you guys are all figuring all your tech stuff out yourself. I think the hardest thing about tech, oh, it's a pigtail. No pigtail. Okay. Okay. So a lot of times, what about design space? I don't know what that is. You have two OESD cable and neither one of them works. Ah, y'all, they fail. They do fail. It's just, it's just a matter of, so if your OESD cable doesn't work, go to Amazon and get one, you guys. They're, it's probably less expensive. I love OESD. Don't get me wrong. Fabulous designs, but they're not a tech company. Okay. They bought pigtails and slapped their name on it and mail it out to you guys. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Ellen, Ellen, this is great. Okay. Nothing worse than putting your USB in and there's too much data to read. You keep yours at two gig. Two gig is a very safe space allowance. Okay. And if you've got files that are larger than two gig, your machine's not reading them anyway. Okay. Again, like I said yesterday, embroidery designs are teeny, teeny, tiny. They're a little bitty K. Just pop the ones on that you need, take it to the machine and stitch it out. And when you get done, delete it off the stick. Keep the master on your laptop. Do I have a lesson on cutting vinyl? I'm not a vinyl crafter, Kathy. Not my jam. So, yep, four works fine in larger. Um, how do you do reverse stitching in Stitch Artist 2? I don't know what that is. I don't know. Yeah, you guys can send me an email if you've got questions. I'll get to them. A lot of times I flag them to answer later. So when I'm not busy. All right, y'all, our hour is up. Thank you so much for joining me. I had a lot of fun this morning. I'm glad I got my trunk cut and my embroidery design ready to go. Tomorrow morning, I will go ahead and stitch it out here on the Luminaire. I've got to get it lined, you know, get the design lined up and figure out how all that's going to work. So yes, your USB might be too large, Kim. Definitely. That, that will cause, that's true. So however good the OESD cable might be. That's just a dongle cable. That's all it is. Is um, it's a pigtail, another word for dongle. Uh, that if your USB is too big, it it's not the cable, it's the machine. It can't see the back of the room. So it says to heck with it. I just won't look at it. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for your time with me. I'm sorry, Dave, she didn't come in. I don't know. She popped in, did a 180, and flew back out. And it was quite. Maybe I tried to call her. So maybe I need to have a goldfish nearby and she loves those crackers. So, all right, you guys have a wonderful day. Thank you for joining me. And uh, you guys go sew something, all right? We'll talk to you soon. Bye.